Hey guys, Andy Tran here with the Inner Bark Outdoors channel. If it's your first time here, welcome. I try and do weekly videos on the outdoors, survival, do it yourself, and reviews. And in this video, I wanted to review the EcoFlow River Pro. This is one of their generators that they recently produced, and it builds upon their river line. So you have different size uh, battery capacity depending on what you need. So this is one of uh, the higher capacity ones, I believe. And essentially what it does is it stores electricity in the form of a lithium ferrophosphate battery. So instead of having a large or noisy combustion engine, you have a really quiet uh, device. So everything is stored inside here and this is about as loud as it gets. I'm going to try and get it next to the microphone so you can hear it. So it just sounds like the cooling fan on a computer. Um, and that's pretty much as loud as it gets, whether it be charging or actually putting on a load. So is this the right thing for you? Go ahead, check out the video, see what I'm able to power with this thing and figure out if this is something that you can replace your gas generator entirely or supplement so you don't have to kick it on all the time. At about the size of a two and a half gallon gas can, the EcoFlow River Pro weighs in at about 17 pounds. The body itself is constructed of aluminum and plastic. The LCD display is one of my favorite features as it shows charge time, remaining battery, power draw, and approximate burn time based on the current load. The unit has multiple options to charge, including wall power, solar, and 12 volt from a vehicle. You have multiple power options available to you, but the great thing about this is that you can turn on power outputs individually, so you only turn on what you need. The light on the face is adequate for a work light. It has a low, high, and SOS mode. The front of the unit also has multiple USB ports, including a USB-C and a fast charge. And if you have 12 volt devices, this unit has you covered as well. I don't like doing unboxing videos, so suffice it to say that everything was well packaged and was really safe during transport. And I just wanted to go over some of the ports and the accessories that come with this thing straight from the factory. So the first one is gonna be for a 12 volt socket that you would find in a standard automobile. And this one goes from that 12 volt socket to this connector here, which is basically what they use for the solar and car connection. So it uses the same port. The next one that they have is the MC4 solar connector. So this one goes into the solar panels and this one has the same connector as this 12 volt one right here. And then they also have the AC cord. And this one is a standard plug that you'd find in a lot of different appliances at home. So if you for some reason lost this one, it's pretty easy to go to a Goodwill or even on Amazon and be able to order one of these things. Um, and it is a grounded plug as well. And then this little cord right here, which is basically a 12 volt male to 12 volt male little connector. And so there's a lot of appliances out there or devices that have 12 volt direct in. And so that'll allow that to uh, go in there without any weird um, interfaces in between. So let's go ahead and look at the device itself. The front of the device is going to have most of your ports. So let's go ahead and turn this thing on. And it has a really nice color LED display. And so right now it's showing us that currently we have 29% power and that's what it ships with. I haven't plugged it in at all to any solar panels or AC um, outlets. Um, and as is, it has 99 hours. Right over here, we have the button for the light. And what I liked about this is that it goes into like this low mode and then you have a high mode and you can already see that based on if we use this continuously, we would have 59 hours of it. Um, and this is pretty bright, like you could easily cook and read and do all that stuff with it. Um, and then you also have, after here, an SOS power mode. And so this can be left on for quite a long time, uh, 88 hours based on, you know, 30%. Pretty cool. Just below that, you have a Wi-Fi reset button. And then just underneath the screen on the left side, we have a USB-C 100 watt. So if you had something like, uh, you know, an Apple, uh, laptop or something like that. You could charge directly off that. Uh, has USB A's and also has a USB fast charge here. 
Um, just below that is that button to turn the whole thing on. And then right over here is where we have a standard 12 volt car socket. It might be going the other way. Um, and so you can plug in your regular car powered accessories through here or through these bottom ports right here. You also have these little tiny ports for this cable. Pretty simple stuff. Now, if you go onto this side of the unit, the only thing we have here, I shouldn't say the only thing, but the main thing we have here is the AC um, outlets. So we have three of them right here, and then they have a little cutout hole for the grounding plug. And if you so choose, you can also choose to get the expandable power pack, and that is plugged in through here. There's two larger connections right here for, I'm assuming the positive and negative. There's also some communication pins as well so that uh, the battery management can communicate. And then on this side is where all of the charging happens. So lift up this flap. You have this little connector right here, which is for the AC power cord. Uh, it's very uniquely shaped, so it's easy to remember. And then you have the fuse reset. So if this thing gets overloaded during charging, um, it'll trip, then all you gotta do is press that. And I'm assuming there's probably a little tube fuse somewhere in there as well. And then right over here is where you'd plug in the MC4 connector or the 12 volt DC connector. And then for a more permanent installation, you also have a grounding screw right here. So you just connect your ground wire to that and then connect it to whatever ground you're using. Um, and that's pretty much it. The back side is sleek. Overall, I think the design and construction of the actual body is really good. Um, it's a mixture of metal and also some plastic. I'm not seeing any weird gappings and it doesn't feel cheap and hollow. Um, it all seems to be working pretty good. So let's go ahead and get into the rest of the review. So now that we've plugged it into the wall power, it has kicked itself on and the internal cooling fan has also kicked on. And so now we have this little dial here that lets us know the re recharge time. Obviously our fuel gauge here. And then looks like how many watts are getting put into this unit. So it's really nice to have this sort of countdown. That way we're not guessing you know, how much uh, until we're ready to go. So as part of our review, EcoFlow actually sent us one of their solar panels. This one is their 160 watt panels. Has the MC4 connectors, which is an industry standard, uh, waterproof, and the case itself actually acts as the stand. So it's all compact. You don't have to have anything extra unless you want to have a more permanent solution. Right now we're in full sunlight. The time on the clock is 4.30 in the afternoon. And we have just a little bit of haze in the atmosphere, not a lot. But this thing is pumping out 108 watts with the 160 watt panel. I got curious and wanted to see what the EcoFlow River Pro could charge and run. I went and hooked up my DeWalt charger for my 18 volt tools and this would run for about 12 hours based on a 97% charge. And it'll also run a shop vacuum for about an hour, pulling at about 600 watts. I also had a heavy duty Milwaukee drill pulling 600 watts and this will run for about an hour. So just starting it on, it's gonna be pulling about 65 watts or so. So one of the best ways to destroy efficiency is to cause heat, and this tool's job is to create heat. So let's see how it is. Let's go in the low setting. This is in Milwaukee. So in the low setting, it's gonna be drawing about 500 watts, giving us, again, about an hour burn time on a full charge. And then, on the highest setting, we're about 600. And I have my jigsaw here, just a run of the mill skill saw.
All right, so we pulled the refrigerator away from the wall so we could actually get to the plug. And uh, good thing we did anyway, because we needed to vacuum behind it. So I'm just gonna go ahead, reach back here, unplug this sucker. Plugged in. Let's see. So this is where we're at when it's at complete idle. And again, I'm just gonna wait to see when the compressor is gonna kick on. So I turned off energy saver mode on the refrigerator and then I turned on power chill. And then I also opened up the refrigerator door per the wife's uh, recommendations. And so the highest output we're able to get for the draw is about 160 watts. So we're just gonna pull up Adobe Premiere Pro which is quite uh, intensive with CPU. And already we're starting to bump up to about 150 watts for power there. Now we're above 150 watts. So now we're starting to get closer to 200 watts of draw. So with that, uh, running basically full tilt on this, let's see what we are at. We're looking at about Four, three to four hours for burn time at an 85% capacity EcoFlow. So not bad. And keep in mind that it is still charging this thing. So when we started, we were at 85%, now we're at 87. So I plugged in as many devices into the front as possible. So I have the USB-C to C going into my Google Pixel. I have this USB going into my Olight M2R Pro flashlight, and then I have this USB going into my iPhone for work, and then this uh, USB that's going into my Kindle Fire. So at least as far as the Google Pixel is concerned, um, this is going to be done charging in about 45 minutes, and at 81% capacity for this, it's gonna be about 19 to 20 hours. So as it is right now, we could probably do this 20 times over before the battery inside is completely depleted. So that is my review of the EcoFlow River Pro. This thing is pretty dialed in for small applications where you're running like small electronics, TVs, things like that. Uh, I think if you're gonna be running something like a, a fridge on it full time, then you definitely should go for their, um, their Delta which can take more solar energy in and also store more of that energy throughout the day so that you can use it 24 seven. But as is, I think this is a really good buy. A couple things that I would change on this uh, would be the cover port for all the charging. So right now, as it is, you have this plastic flap and once you have it open, it kind of just flaps in the wind like this. Um, it would be really nice if it had like a little slot or something like that where this can actually go like that and then like push into the body just so it's not going to get hit by something. But, um, you know, that's, that's like the only major concern I have for this thing. Um, you know, I wish that we could put in more solar power into it. Um, a lot of the like consumer solar panels out there start at about 300 watts. And being that this can only take 200, it'd be really nice to be able to go on Craigslist, find a 300 watt solar panel that's used and then hook it up right to the uh, MC4 cables. But uh, as is, it can't do that. So you're kind of forced to use um, either two coupled 100 watt solar panels or the 160 watt solar panel like I have right now. Um, but overall, I think this is a really good buy. Uh, costs about the same as uh, some of like the mid-price generators out there. Of course, you don't have to deal with any of the extension cords, you know, because you have to keep it far away from your residence. Uh, can't have it in your living room, obviously. You can't put it in your garage and run it because of the carbon monoxide. So this is really nice. You can just carry it around like a lunchbox, bring it right to the source where you need the power, plug it in, and then you're good to go. Um, one of the things that I'm thinking about doing is going ahead and buying the expen uh, expansion pack for this thing. That way, you know, if I'm using it as sort of like my home backup, I get double the time on all that. So I can run the fridge for probably, you know, 10 hours or so, um, which is plenty of time really until you can start getting some more energy back in, um, either through the solar or what have you. But um, this is a really cool backup. 
uh, for the price, I think it is uh, worth every penny. Um, the interface on it is really easy. As long as you can read simple English, I think you can operate this thing. Everything is laid out quite easily for you. And then the build quality is really good. Um, no, there's no like weird gaps, doesn't feel flimsy, um, nothing's loose, it's all solid. So if you guys have any comments or questions, go ahead and message me directly or comment down below. If you guys enjoyed the video, please like, share, and subscribe. Also check out my Facebook page, Instagram, and other social media. It really helps me know these are the kind of videos you want to see. But as always, take care out there. Bye.